Hello everyone, welcome back to Eternal Brews. My name is Pojo, and today we're going to be talking about the list that I took to second in the RNG Eternal Mid-Season Major. So this is a tournament competitive list, and this is also one of my favorite lists for grinding in slower metas. I really, really like this deck. Um, I've always enjoyed Elysian mid-range, uh, and back in, I think, closed beta, I had a, a pledge to Eileen and a pledge to Talor finished out before anything else, just because I played a lot of Elysian mid-range to get up to things. This was my my go-to grinding deck before I moved on to Stone Scar Burn and the Maulers deck, and uh, so I wanted to show it off and give people a little idea of how it works, because uh, this is a, a very fun deck and also like a, a really, really solid deck. So this is the Elysian Midrange Archetype, and the big idea behind it is that we are leveraging lots and lots of card advantage and lots and lots of big, big units, which is just everything is huge, and that is basically all that we're going for. Uh, this version is designed to be a little slower than most midrange versions. We'll expose an alternate version of the deck that's a little bit faster, but uh, the basic idea behind it is that we are trying to play against the big Combray matchup and play against like the the more like slow control decks and just outvalue them by playing down this card, Staff of Stories, which is a 0-4 relic weapon, start of your turn, draw a card. And uh, basically in any sort of situation where your opponent has very low interaction, where they're playing a lot of big stuff and you're playing a lot of big stuff and you're creating big stalls, Staff of Stories is going to get you an incredible amount of value and help you win the game. Um, so the overall idea behind a Legion midrange is pretty straightforward. We have a curve of units between 3 and 6, which are all above 5 power, extremely good at basically being defensive, they typically have more than 5 health, and then beyond that they also have abilities like Endurance, Overwhelm, Flying, and Cerso's exceptional Overwhelm plus the ability to turn units into 2-2 two, two pigs. Cerso the Great Glutton is one of the hardest units to answer simply through board state. She has to be blocked by three different units just to get a an even block with because everything that gets blocked by her will of course turn into a pig unless it has an Aegis. Um, this card is really really demanding and one of the reasons why Elysian midrange decks can often do very very well against Combray midrange decks. Uh, really really super strong card and uh, one of the better choices that you can have. So, other things that we can run. We have Sandstorm Titan, of course, the uh, premier legendary 4-drop, a 5-6 Endurance, so pretty solid stuff there. Predatory Carnosaur, the 6-6 six, six Killer. This card is designed to push through against other Sandstorm Titan heavy decks and also against basically anything that wants to put up a bunch of blockers. This allows you to get value as well as aggression as well as a 6-6 six, six unit that is just a little too big to handle. And the more of these big units that you are stacking on top of each other, the harder it is to deal with each one individually. Your opponent will often have removal for the first two to three of these cards, but if you're playing four, five, or six of these guys, then eventually you're going to pressure them out based sorely on that kind of level of advantage. So False Prince, the 5-5 five, five that when a spell is played directly on him turns into a 1-1 one, one frog. This card can be a little tricky in the meta, but it's hard to get good 3 drops for an Elysian midrange deck. You can use Ageless Mentor, but it's a little bit on the weak side for setting up your board, and False Prince gives you that 5-5 five, five with Overwhelm, which is an extremely strong stat line. The drawback is very obvious, it can be Levitated or Vara's Favored, or any number of things can happen to it, but it does have an advantage against Vanquish, which is a card that is often played on it and still leaves a little frog behind that you can later buff up with Xenon Obelisk or just continue to press a little bit of damage with. We do run one Xenon Obelisk. We're not going terribly heavy on this because it's more important to play units down on the board and wear down your opponent's removal than it is to make your units bigger. But Xenon Obelisk is a very powerful effect, and we recognize that this card is very, very good in breaking stalls. Finally, we run two Crystallizes. You can run as many as four in certain decks, and if you stun and deal one damage to every enemy unit, of course, that's a huge blowout if you have any amount of board. Uh, if you have just two of your big units down, this is 10 damage each turn, so for a full 20 Crystallize, can be an exceptional way to push a ton of damage early on. Finally, we have the standard Mystic Ascendant, Empower plus two, and plus 2 and draw a card. This card is your 7 drop. You play him and you buff him and he becomes a 6-6 six, six and you draw a card. And that's just a bit way to get a lot of card advantage out of a card that is very, very difficult to kill. And if it does, in fact, uh, get killed, then, well, you're not too unhappy about it. You at least drew one card out of that mess. Finally, we have the lower end. We keep the removal fairly simple. Predator's Instinct at 4 means that we have lots of unconditional removal that relies on us having large units on the board, which we're almost always going to have. 
We want these Predator's Instincts primarily to make things uh, just a little bit harder for our opponents. This is really, really good on Sandstorm Titan in particular because Titan has Endurance, so it can kill the unit and then still have a block up later. Backlash, I actually run three of these. We have a board, a deck that is entirely dependent on blowing out our opponent with large, large units. So we want to be able to counter not only removal spells, but also the big one, Harsh Rule. You have to really weigh when it's right to hold up Backlash and when it's not in this deck, because this deck is very much about playing efficient threats, and it often won't have as much power open as you want it to. But if you play very smartly with Backlash, you can get some tremendous blowouts, and uh, the extra damage helps as well for pressing. Friendly Wisp is another deck card that is designed to take care of or take advantage of the low interaction of the Combre decks and to basically just sort of get into a position where we can set up and get a bunch of draws. If you get the draw off of Friendly Wisp, that's usually a really big deal. You can always save this card for around six to play Friendly Wisp Sandstorm Titan, and then you'll get two extra cards basically replacing your Sandstorm Titan and your Wisp with new stuff. So good way to get a little bit of extra card advantage in here without having to run Wisdom of the Elders. Other removal includes three polymorphs. These cards are actually very, very good. Unconditional removal is always strong, and the 1-1 one, one frog that is left behind is pretty minimal on the kind of boards that we are setting up. It's also very vulnerable to uh, crystallize. We run one rain of frogs to mess up our opponent's hand just a little bit, and we run one decay to make sure that we don't get too heavily bogged down in armory decks with uh, large die shows or stone scar malls or anything like that. Decay can really solve a lot of problems. It can solve xenon obelisk, and can solve a lot of other things like that, and the little health gain that it gives is actually very, very relevant on certain tempo decks, so it's a good way to take the wind out of the sails of token decks in particular. Okay, that's pretty much it for the deck. Let's go ahead and go into a couple of games. You've seen this list on the tournament scene before, so we'll only play one or two, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it and talk about some variations. All right, opening up, we have a hand with a pretty decent setup. False Prince is an early card. The two crystallizes are a little bit ugly to see this early, but I think overall I'm pretty happy with this. False Prince is definitely a card we want to see. Since we're very likely to draw into four drops, the three drops are the rarer cards, and therefore the ones that we kind of want to strive for. Seek Power sets up. My opponent might be playing mid-range as well. I'm going to go ahead and grab my second blue or my... Hmm, that's actually tricky. So second blue does set up for Crystallize, so I think I'm going to get it that way. Uh, it is true that if you set up four time, you can get Champion of Wisdom here, but I think because I have the double Crystallizes and I don't know if I'm going to draw Serso or Champion, uh, we can go ahead and go for the time here, or for the Primal here. In general, you want to weigh heavily towards time. The more time that you can pick up, uh, if you can pick up four time, that's your cutoff point for Champion of Wisdom. Second Sight would imply that my opponent's deck is more of a Carpet Shuffle style deck. Let's grab the time. And indeed he did pick up something with Echo. I'm actually thinking that's Clock Roaches. It's less likely to be... Okay, find the way. So. Could be he's running a crown deck, could be he's running something else. What gave it away? He's going to have a lot of power, but it's also going to be a lot of depleted power, so if we can rush in and do a bunch of damage early, that would be especially good. Don't want to run into a lightning strike here. Alright. See if there's a wasp. That would be my ideal. No removal at all is also pretty good. I'm going to play Sandstorm Titan here. The double crystallizes can just get us across the board at this point. If all he does is play Chump Blockers, which uh, it sounds like it might be a Clockroach Day. Slow, dirtily hand. Gonna have some difficulties. What you got? So many Echoes. There's got to be Teriax Hatchlings or something. Oh, wow. Still going slow. Like, still playing, like, very heavily into the hand. So without a lot of board advantage, we should be able to just pressure out here. He had to discard Find the Way from, like, Overdraw. Okay. Well, we get to actively punish him for playing so slowly. There was a pause there for something. 
wasn't a lightning strike. I can't imagine what that is, actually. Another second sight, okay. So much echo. Probably going to be some sort of chump blocker here, and then we'll just crystallize and win the game. Ah, Carnosaurus Grand here. It's a pretty solid setup. I think I am going to just swing for five here. I suspect that he has another Carnosaur, so if I were to Mystic Ascendant here, he'd play the Carnosaur, kill the Ascendant, and then that would be game. Because I would have Crystal Eyes. So let's do that. Your power. We're going to force him to have Carnosaur, and if he has Carnosaur, we win. He could always Carnosaur and not hit the Mystic Ascendant, but rather hit the 5-5. Uh, five five. Okay, it's Dinosaur time. So Crystallize here. And that should be game. The lightning strike hits the false prince. But we do get the six there, so. Wraps it up quite nicely. Crystallize, really great for punishing your opponent for playing a little slowly and not basically defending his health total. If your opponent gets low, then crystallizes the card that's going to really seal that that game up. All right, round two. What do we got? Primal Sigil time. False Prince here. You don't want to keep two power hands in general. They're just a little bit on the weak side. And without anything to play on three, like we, we can't really get False Prince unless we get double time. So this hand, while appealing, is not what we're looking for. Much better. So time sets up, then false prints. Seek power, sandstorm titan. And uh, we set up the false prints. We all change. Oh. Do I want to get a little greedy here and play down that friendly wisp? This deck looks like it probably has some answers, but it also looks like it's trying to play strangers, so... There's a chance I might not get uh, Vara's favor punished. We'll try it out. I need the card draw just to fix up a little bit of power. I think this is a, a fairly weak play, but I also don't really like False Prince here, and Vara's favor does similar things to False Prince, so at the very least, Friendly Wisp can be False Prince bait. What you got? And a Lightning Storm? I will take an Annihilate. What gave it away? Annihilate means he doesn't have Vara's favor, which means that the 5-5 five five is much, much better. So that's one of the things that Friendly Wisp can sort of do as a, a job. It can be the, the canary for the uh, Vara's favor. Swing for 5 there, and we Sandstorm Titan. My opponent can be running Harsh Rules. This looks like it might be like a Harsh Rule recurring Nightmare deck with Champion of Cunning. So this next turn will be a little scary, and we don't want to play any more units than we've already got. Generally stick to two units if you see double green, and you expect that there's going to be harsh rolls. And because my opponent hasn't played much, he's got a lot of removal here, I expect there's going to be harsh rolls. All right, Vanquish leaves me with just the 5-5, five five, so now it's okay to play units, but we're not going to do that right away. Continue to push damage, keep Mystic Ascendant set up. The found show no mercy. Crystallize seems fine here. I can attack for 5 first. 
Do I want to just polymorph polymorph? I think I like that best, because there's there's still the possibility of another champion. And of course a shadow would very much mess us up. Most mightily mess us up. Black Sky Harbinger fortunately does not uh, prevent or does not target Black Sky Harbinger, which would be very bad for me. From here, I can seek power to get a power. Crystallize to prevent Black Sky Harbinger from getting any health back. And swing for five. Now, Harbinger is still a problem I have to deal with eventually. Touch of shadow. And now we're actually getting into a bit of trouble. I could see another champion here. If I see another champion here, I'm actually in quite a bit of trouble, I would say. A single shot is all it takes. Okay, Mystic Ascendant. Your power flows through me. Sandstorm Titan grounds the flyer, which is important. I don't expect to see a rapid shot here. Now here's where Champion of, or here's where Backlash comes really into play. It's a very handy card here. We're gonna Sandstorm Titan. Gotta lock his board down. I'm not going to attack into it because Mystic Ascendant's too valuable. Mystic Ascendant number two is pretty cute. We'll go ahead and play out Champion of Wisdom here. We don't want to play Mystic Ascendant because we want to leave Backlash up. Predator's Instinct picks us up something decent. I can at least... Uh, let's go with Instinct on Champion. Looks like there might be a Backlash here. I'm fine with that. And we can play Mystic Ascendant just for the heck of it, but again, leaving the Backlash up more important. Friendly Wisp helps us out with card draw. We are in kind of a stall here, but if I can set up with a Staff of Stories, or if I can get the Friendly Wisp draw, then either one of those is going to help me. And Mystic Ascendant play a power is really, really powerful here. That's fine. There is like a lot of potential damage push here, which very much worries me. Like, I, I don't like how much damage he actually has available at the moment. Uh, I still can't really do anything about that, though. If I see a last word, I'm very happy, because I have the Decay in hand. Third Mystic Ascendant. Good grief. I really want to play one, but... We're just going to have to stay put. There we go. Mystic Ascendant. Banner. Your power flows through me. And now we're much more ahead of the curve. Go ahead and end out the turn. Seek power is fine. The only thing we really care about here is... Well, I guess we kind of care about last word. Take your last breath. So... I think I will play the third Mystic Ascendant. Your power flows through me. I'm going to attack for 10, because I need to actually thin out this board a little bit. Not amazing. But we get a little bit of damage out of it. Seek power. I'm not going to seek power because last word is actually kind of scary here. I don't expect it, but it could happen. Anything that kills Sandstorm Titan is very bad for me, so we need to ground his units as much as possible. Shot is all it takes. Take your last breath. Okay, Primal Sigil here. The more flyers we kill, the better. Let's swing for 12 and 10. Force more chump blocks and get some more units that can lock down flyers as well as have endurance. 
I could also push with Predatory Carnosaur, but that's not as efficient as playing two units here. So we're just going to try and set up as many blockers as possible. Okay, there's three. The blocks don't look great for him. Regardless of what he does, he's going to take a ton of damage. Sandstorm Titan. And end my turn. So last word doesn't stop us now. And we're good to go. Got the Mystic Ascendant value there. Okay, here we go. We got Mega Wolf 666. And here we are. Um, I like this champion. I'm not sure about this Decay and Polymorph. Decay is actually a card that I would definitely side out in, like, a more... In the current meta, I think. I think we'll probably... Like, the, the version that I'm going to show at the end of this will not have Decay in it, because it's just a, a difficult card unless you're facing off against a particular type of armory. But I think we do keep this here. We're going to pull for extra time. We're going to try and get Champion of Wisdom down. And Predatory Carnosaur will definitely be... Pretty grand later in the game. I've got enough power for Cerso, so I just need actual power now. But I'll settle for a False Prince. Seek power? Looks good. And got my own Seat of Wisdom. That's the real card that I want. Champion of Wisdom comes after that, or we can polymorph the Sandstorm Titan, which doesn't actually happen here, because... Okay. Let's go ahead and play a Primal. And I am going to play Champion of Wisdom here. The grace of Elysia guide you. Though she's not going to do a whole heck of a lot against a Sandstorm Titan. It's possible I should Polymorph first. No blocks there. Play a Time. Now I have a 6-6. Six, six. Swing for 6. And then Cerso. Piggy, piggy. Can block both False Prince and the Dawnwalker, and prevent the Dawnwalker from coming back from the Void. Which stalls my opponent quite mightily. They won't stop me. Copper Hall Elite presents a bit more of a threat against Cerso. We want to make sure that she's that that's dead. So we Carnosaur here. Swing for six. And six. We're going to pressure out this uh, slower mid-range deck. Because my opponent's playing like a little bit more wibbly stuff, the Dawnwalkers, the Copper Hall Elites, he just has a little bit less meat. Ooh, that's not good. I wonder if that was an error, or if uh, he was just trying to get like an extra blocker there. Possible, I feel like mirror imaging the Dawnwalker is just always better. But in any case, he gets several frogs out of this. Uh, we do get a triple block where he can actually kill Cerso. So I think I just go for it anyways. Frog, frog, plus Dawnwalker. So yeah, it doesn't actually matter what he mirror imaged there. And I think he knew that, so... Not necessarily a play or error, but it's the kind of cheekiness that can get you into trouble. I wouldn't recommend doing stuff like that. Uh, let's go ahead and banner. And we have Polymorph and Decay for... Yeah, looks like that'll wrap it up. Yeah, those Carnosaurs are really, really good at moving the game along, especially in the ranked ladder. Uh, for the tournaments, I use Mystic Ascendant, but uh, yeah, let's actually talk about that a little bit more as we go into our outro. So that's the basic idea behind the deck. We are pushing like a lot of damage, and we are basically just always progressing. We have a bunch of stuff going on that's just very, very helpful on that front. Uh, this is a version of the deck that I'm currently using on the ranked ladder, or like just something that I've done a little bit more work with. We've taken the Mystic Ascendants out, and we're running instead like a, a, a large panoply of weird and interesting cards that I have just found to do a little bit better against various bits in the meta. This is a, a bit more scat, so to 
uh, look at some of these alternate options. You can certainly go to four ofs in some of these if you don't feel like running one or two of them. Dawnwalker, a 4-1, of course, that comes back every time that you play a unit with five or more. This card belongs in most Elysian midrange decks. I took it out specifically because there was a lot of void hate in the tourney, or because I expected to see a lot of silences from Combray in particular. I didn't really want Dawnwalker to be a card on my board, but it's much better in a lot of other matchups, so we play it as a two of in this, just because uh, we still expect to see some Combray, but we're also like finding that card to be very, very beneficial. Accelerated Evolution, plus one, plus one on your choice of flying or endurance. This card cracks permafrosts, which is one of its best features. The other thing that it does is it gives a plus one, plus one, which gets your units just above Obliterate against the Stone Scar types of decks. So I really like having one or two of these as like sort of a, a special effect. We can use two of these, or you can run one of them along with an infinite hourglass. I think that giving your units endurance is very beneficial against the token metas in particular. So I spread the endurance along two different cards, but I do try to give my units endurance in a bunch of different ways, because Endurance Cerso is just a hard card to deal with on any type of board, and it really stymies the more aggro-oriented decks. Uh, we still keep the staffs, we run up to three crystallizes because having that killer can be really really effective if you are running a lower to the ground board, which I am. I run Healer's Cloak against Burn because Healer's Cloak is just fantastic in Elysian midrange. And I'm running one Steward of Prophecy as like sort of a fun of and also like some something to do against those armory decks that are trying to rise to the challenge for Akaria all the time. So yeah, a lot of cute uh, alternate options. This is sort of my personal balance, but if you want to basically run a version of this deck, if you want to tweak different versions of these decks, these are all recommended cards that you can uh, cycle in and out and play with as you like so that you can get the balance that you prefer for whatever meta it is that you're currently in. Uh, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time with another Eternal Bruise. Bye!